Wow, Islanders, the end of a long, storied career as Royal Caribbean Group's Richard Fain announces his retirement after 33 years. We have a lot of details on this story and we'll share them with you today. Plus, many cruise lines are reporting record-breaking onboard spending for cruises since July. We knew in June, late June and July, there was a lot of onboard spending, but it continues to increase into the fall. We have quotes from several CEOs today about onboard spending. And finally, more great news for Galveston, Texas. Royal Caribbean adds another ship in Galveston. We have that news and so much more right now on Island Time. I hope your week is off to a great start, and my goodness, I have to first thank you for Sunday night. What an evening we had together. I said then, and I will say it now, I think that was our best live show we've ever had. There was so much interaction, so many questions, knowledge sharing. We had a great crowd. Thank you so much for being a part of it, and you know we're going to do it again very, very soon. This is Island Time, and I am your host, Derek, and we all need some time in the islands. So let's spend some time here today talking about cruise news, and there's a lot of it. There is so much going on today. I could not, literally could not fit it in to one show today. I've had to table some things for tomorrow, but let's get started with the big story today. Uh, it's affected markets, it's affected uh, culture, it's affected cruise news, of course, with the announcement from Royal Caribbean Group and Richard Fain, his retirement after 33 years serving as CEO. 33 years, that doesn't happen today. I want to go ahead and ask you, how long have you had your current job? If it is indeed longer than 33 years, please share it with me in the comment section below. We're going to get some interaction early this morning. 33 years, that's longer than I've been alive. How about that? 33 years. Um, January the 3rd, 2022 is going to be the big date with Jason Liberty succeeding him. So yes, the announcement was today that Fane would step down. His replacement is announced. It's also important to, no to note that Fane will remain uh, as chair on the board of directors. So Richard Fane, who is an icon, uh, if you've never sailed Royal Caribbean, you may think this news doesn't impact you. You may think that the career of Richard Fane doesn't impact you. It most certainly does. A man who has assembled great leadership teams over the years. He has overseen so many projects for Royal Caribbean Group that has expanded cruising and the capabilities of cruising and onboard venues and entertainment and ship design, always pushing the envelope. One thing that you have to respect about Royal Caribbean International, Royal Caribbean Group, Richard Fain, is that he continually has pushed the envelope of what does cruising look like? What experience can we provide to cruisers? And like I said, you may have never cruised on any of Royal Caribbean Group's ships, but you've been impacted by Richard uh, Fain and his career because in a free market e uh, economy, competition is a good thing. The things that Richard Fain was doing with Royal Caribbean Group, Carnival Cruise Line and Carnival Corporation, in Norwegian Cruise Line, in Disney, and you name the cruise line, they had to keep up. Competition is a good thing. So, so many, of the th so many of the things that us Islanders enjoy about our preferred cruise line may have come from Richard Fain and his idea or because competition breeds success. So it's great, it's great news for Richard Fain. It was surprising news, I will say that. After 33 years, uh, one of the longest tenured CEOs uh, in America, but he's really helped all of us as cruisers through the pandemic. His videos were so personable. 
and so positive that even if you didn't cruise Royal Caribbean at all, or maybe not very much, you could find compassion there and a hope for a better tomorrow. Richard has been a visionary leader who has made innumerable and remarkable contributions to our company and our industry. That comes from Bill Kimsey, lead director from the board of Royal Caribbean Group. Most recently, his stewardship during the COVID pandemic marks him, marks him as one of the greatest CEOs of his generation. The cruise community and all of us in the company owe him a debt of grat gratitude. And he's exactly right. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this transition takes place. Royal Caribbean Group, and I know Richard Fain, he, he had even um, pointed out that there's been a transition plan in the works for several years, as you would expect with a transition or a move like this. Um, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how things go forward because he's such an icon in the cruise industry, but it sounds like he's not going out of the game completely. He's just going to be on the sideline now. There are no words to express my admiration and appreciation to the people of the Royal Caribbean Group who have been the real drivers of our success and my profound appreciation for the support and guidance of the board of directors during good times and, and bad throughout this long period of sustained growth. That is from Fane, the quote that he had this morning as this announcement took place uh, early this morning. Um, he also, uh, Fane also said that now was the time, now that we are, um, I don't want to say through the COVID pandemic, he certainly did, um, but we're well on our way to a full return, which he mentioned in this statement. He said, given the uh, great depth and breadth of our leadership and the positive outlook for our business, this is the appropriate time to step aside and have Jason take over. He is a highly versatile and strategic leader who has been integral to all aspects of our company's accomplishments and performance. So good luck, of course, to Richard Fain. He's not going very far, we know, but it's gonna be interesting to see what a new mind brings. There will be changes with leadership. You know that if you work in corporate America, if you're a leader yourself, there are changes. There are ways that you do things, you assemble teams differently. It will be good for the cruise industry. Let's move here to story number two. We have seen this, and I'm, we're going to have some, some interaction here, but cruise line executives, as earning reports have come out the last couple of weeks, keep on mentioning the record growth of onboard spending by cruisers like you and I. Cruise lines are seeing record onboard revenues per passenger since the restart in late June and early July. Uh, here's Arnold Donald Carnival CEO, uh, Carnival Corporation CEO, and he had this to say in the third quarter earnings report last week. Our onboard revenues for guests are off the charts, and our net promoter scores have been exceptionally strong. Arnold Donald, this is the second quarter in a, in a row that he has referenced that onboard spending continues to, to raise every single month. And as we get into the fall, when you think things may slow down, people spending money other ways with the holiday season, people continue to spend more and more money. If you've cruised since the Great Cruise Restart started in late June, have you spent more money on board than you usually do? I've cruised a couple of times. We have another cruise in less than 40 days. And I can honestly say we have. We have spent more money on board than what we did pre-COVID. Is that the same for you or do you have a budget? Let us know in the comments below. I would love to interact and to see uh, what Islanders do, um, especially in this new world of cruising. Um, Richard Fain, speaking of Richard Fain, he had some uh, remarks as well about onboard spending uh, in his third quarter uh, report. He says, he called the onboard spending in the third quarter unparalleled that's what that's the word he used uh, for onboard spending is unparalleled unparalleled onboard revenue strength contributed to a 12 percent increase in total revenue per passenger cruise day compared to the third quarter of 2019 2019 was the height of cruising i mean that's what that's where we're i say we stockholders and company companies board of directors they want to get back to 2019 and Richard Fain said that 
onboard spending right now since the cruise restart is 12% higher than the highest high in 2019. That's huge. It is. Michael Bailey, president and CEO of Royal Caribbean International, uh, said the onboard revenue environment was truly impressive. His quote is, we've also really increased the volume of special groups, such as gaming groups that are coming on board our ships, and that's proving to be very profitable. He also noted a, soft, a new software system company is using uh, to drive more pre-cruise revenue marketing, trying to sell drink packages, internet packages, special dining pa packages to passengers before they even get on ship, okay? Um, Bailey also referenced special groups. We've seen Carnival Corporation do the same thing. If you are in the Players Club, if you're a casino player, there's so many events right now taking place on board uh, that they comp most of your cruise, cruise fare, but they know you're going to spend money once you get on board, more than likely. If you don't spend the money, self-control, more power to you, absolutely. And I can't leave out Norwegian Cruise Lines CEO Frank Del Rio, who also in the third quarter reportings call had this to say, onboard revenue has exceeded our base on expectations by over 20% with broad based strength across all shifts, regions, and revenue streams. How crazy is that? Now, Frank Del Rio did say in his earnings call that he's not sure that this growth, this level of growth is sustainable. He predicts that this spending will come down as cruising continues uh, for the long period of time, that this is just an initial shock, you know, that people had uh, budgets, traveling budgets, vacation budgets that were increased and inflated because of the year 2020 with COVID, and that as cruising goes along and becomes more normal and re uh, times return to a more normal time that this spending will go down, time will tell, we'll see, but cruise lines are getting marketing ideas of how to market to those to try to spend more. Let's end today with great news from Royal Caribbean, from Royal Caribbean, as the Adventure of the Seas heads to Galveston and is now home ported for now, it's seasonal home port in Galveston. This is straight from uh, the port of Galveston. Royal Caribbean International's Adventure of the Seas, the first Voyager class ship to home port in Texas, began its inaugural seasonal sailing itinerary from the port of Galveston yesterday, November the 8th, with five-day Western Caribbean uh, cruise. Um, the largest Royal Caribbean ship selling short getaways from Galveston, the Adventure of the Seas, is going to offer four- and five-night cruises, much like the Carnival Breeze does in Galveston. Um, the Adventure of the Seas will go to Costa Maya and Cozumel, Mexico, if you have the five-day itinerary. If you have the four-day four itinerary, of course, you get one stop. Roger Reese, who's been so great to us uh, here at Island Time over uh, the past several months, said this, We welcome Adventure of the Seas to her new home, the fourth most popular cruise port in the United States and the only cruise port in Texas. Galveston uh, is, is excited to have the Adventure of the Seas here in Galveston, giving cruise passengers additional sailing options is one of the reasons why our port continues to draw more than 1 million passengers a year from Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and beyond. He should have included Arkansas. There's a lot of Arkansans who go down to Galveston to cruise. Adventure of the Seas joins Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas as the largest cruise ships to sail from Galveston, which draws from a cruise market of an estimated 30 million people within a 300 mile radius. The port anticipates an average of 3,100 passengers on the Adventure of the Seas per cruise. So the great news for Galveston uh, and Royal Caribbean as we continue to monitor the work being done in Galveston on a new terminal for Royal Caribbean and the Oasis of the class, uh, Oasis of the Seas class ships uh, that's going to call her home very, very soon. All kinds of cruise news, I told you so. I could not fit it all in today. We have all kinds of stuff already planned for tomorrow. We have a couple of questions that we're talking about in the comments below. Be sure you contribute, that you don't just watch the video. You contribute below. You also contribute on our Facebook page. It's There's so much going on there. If you're not there yet, please get there. If you enjoyed the content today, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not an Islander yet and you have not subscribed, please be sure to do so. We will see you tomorrow with more cruise news right here on Island Time.